Okay, now let's get right into making something. The first tool we're going to use is the second tool from the top on, in the modeling tool set. This tool is called Draw One. Uh, it's got a lot of options, as you can see. If I slide around, I can make a rectangle, a angle rectangle, polygon, circle, a lot of other stuff. I'm going to click on that tool. And notice when I do the red border that surrounds the tool. This indicates that the tool is active. Now click on the center of the main viewport and then click and drag your mouse away and you'll see that what happens is we create a two-dimensional rectangle on the grid pattern that is active. Remember we talked about grid patterns down here in the lower left hand corner. We want to look over at the right hand side now at the tool options. Now when we use the rectangle on the left and we look at the tool options on the right we can see there are several different kinds of objects that we can create. What we did using the first one on the left is to create a 2D surface. That surface here means it's two-dimensional. It has no thickness at all. The next option we have is to create a, an insert or a 2D wall. So that will give us, let's make another rectangle right over here. And you can see what we have is a wall that's two-dimensional, but there's nothing in the center. It's not filled like this is a completely full rectangle. This one is open in the center. Now let's create our first 3D object. We're going to click on the third tool there, and this is the 3D extrusion tool. So when we go back into the main viewport, we click and drag our mouse to create the 2D tool, click again, and it's going to allow us to raise that tool up and create a three-dimensional object. The uh, uh, next option we have is we can create a pyramid, a 3D converge they call it, but it's actually a pyramid. So I'll drag my rectangle out again, click on it, and then when I pull it up you can see I get a pyramid. The next one after that is the wall, three-dimensional wall tool, which is going to give us something similar to this, but with a third dimension. So let's try that and see what happens. Click on that, lift it up, and there I have a wall. Okay. And the last one is a insert opening, which allows us to choose a wall and then insert an opening. Let's choose one that's easier to see than that one. So we'll choose that wall back on this and we're going to choose that and then insert an opening here on the front. You can see what happens is actually making a hole in that wall for us. Now one other thing I want to point out to you since we've created all these objects is we need to be able to move around and look at it from different directions and different angles. Up here in the tool dock you'll see a lot of tools that manipulate the view and this tool here this is called the set view tool. If you click on that, it becomes active. And when you pull down into the main screen, you can see how you get these four arrows that are sort of in a almost in a ball pattern. And when we turn those around, move to the left and right with the mouse, you can see how we can see from the side and from all the way behind. And if we go up and down, we can see the bottom, we can see the top, we can see a range of things here. What I want to do next is I'm going to delete, I'm going to go down here, click on the delete tool, which is the trash can, make that active, and going to uh, delete all these objects and just settle on one thing. The first thing we're going to do in uh, Form Z is what I call creating the 30 second chair. This is usually impressive for people. We're not going to do it in 30 seconds. Uh, once you get good at, at it, you can actually build yourself a chair in 30 seconds. But um, I'm going to do this as a sort of a rough conceptual model, so I'm not going to worry a lot about exact dimensions or scale. I'm just going to get right into showing how you how to make something in Form Z so you can begin to enjoy the program creatively. So I'm going to start out with a cube. And I want it to be a three-dimensional cube, so I'm going to go over on the tool options on the right-hand side, and I'm going to click there where it says 3D Extrusion. And I'm going to make myself a cube. I'm going to make it, oh, about this big roughly. What I'm going to do first to this cube, and zoom in and on a little closer, and get the hand tool from the top and center it up and pull it up close to where I can see it. I'm going to actually add some uh, lines to the faces of the cube so that I can manipulate parts of, of the cube individually. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over here to this tool which we haven't talked about which is called the reshape tool. And if you hover over the reshape tool, you can see you've got a lot of different options here. And the one we're going to use first is called offset segment. So I'm going to click on that, make it active. And what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to click on one segment on the cube and pull uh, it over. This is going to actually divide the face in a way that I can 
either manipulate this portion, the, the smaller portion of the cube, or the larger portion. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here on the side. And these are going to become the arms of my chair. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now I'm going to go back over to the reshape tool and I'm going to click on the first icon in the upper left and this is the actual reshape tool that allows us to change the shape of the cube. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab on to uh, this face here. It'll turn red when I hover over it. Click on it and I'm going to pull it down. And you can see what happens. Is the cube is changing shape. I'm going to go up do my uh, rotate my view a little and I'm going to do it again to the other side. So I'm going to grab that and pull it down. And if I if I come over here and I click on that point, it's the that side and that side are going to be exactly the same. So now I have two arms. And what I want to do now is pull down the seat. So I'm going to pull that down, down here like this. And you can see we've got something that vaguely resembles a chair. Next, I want to put a headrest in. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab up here. I'm going to pull this in a little. And pull this in a little here. I'm not really worried about the dimensions. It's just a concept. And I'm going to reshape that center segment and pull it up and build myself a little headrest. Now, what I want to be able to do is to um, use that headrest uh, and affect it without affecting the rest of my model. So I'm going to go down here and grab this one. I'm going to pull it up here and right on there so it intersects with these two sides. And that's my headrest. Okay. Now what I want to do is make some legs. So obviously I can't see the legs from this view, so I'm going to go back up to my Set View tool. I'm going to tilt by moving my mouse up so I can see the bottom. Once I can see the bottom, I'm going to pull out some smaller segments that I can use for legs. So you can see how I'm just cutting, basically cutting this thing apart. So all of the uh, these individual faces that what and then that's actually what they become is, is individual faces within the overall model they're still all attached if i if i go over here to my pick tool and then i go over here to my tool options on the right hand side for pick you can see i can pick object i can pick an in, insert or a hole i can pick a fa face i can pick an another type of insert called an outline i can pick this tool, which gives me a segment that is within the object. This is a segment on the edge of the object, and this is actually a point. So I can choose, if I like, when I have the point tool picked, I can choose an individual point uh, on, the, on the model. But um, right now we're going to go and set it back to object, because that's what we need to be. And I'm going to now go back to my reshape tool on the left-hand side in the modeling tools. I'm going to click on the reshape. And I'm going to pull myself down a leg. And so they'll all be the same height. I'm going to pull this one down until I match up with the other leg. Same thing over here and pull that down and try to find a way to match that guy. I may have to actually change my view a little so that I can match up with the two legs that I made on the other side. So I'm going to pull it down some. But see, I can still see that face. So when I pull it down, I can click over here in the corner and that'll give me the same height. Okay, so now I got a, a simple chair. Now this is uh, not the uh, greatest chair, and I like to do some uh, work on it to, to make it look more interesting. And this is where Form Z gets exciting, because now I'm going to show you another modeling tool down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from the top. It's called the Subdivision Surfaces tool. This tool is pretty incredible. It just comes with Form Z Pro version 8, so it's something that's just come out. And what it allows us to do is to take a simple shape like this that's very rectangular and simple, and it allows us to turn it into something organic. And all we do is click on the tool, click on the object. Wow, what did we get there? Look at that. That is an amazing, interesting, modern art chair that we've built in just a couple of minutes in Form Z. Now, when we still have the, the subdivision surface tool selected, we can actually start to deform this object by using these deformation points, the little yellow balls that are all over the object. So if I want to pull this corner up in the front and make it a little more dramatic there, I can do that. I'm going to rotate around here to the basically to the front. So I can click on the subdivision surface tool again, grab the corresponding one on the other side, and make that you know similar. 
can see how that is even making our chair even more exciting. And you can, at this point, use your imagination to start to create something amazing with the subdivision services tool. It's a really neat tool that we have. Now, let's take a look at what we've done. I'm going to go up here to the top under Edit, and I'm just going to undo those deformations that I did up on the shoulders of the chair. I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to do a couple more undos there. Until now, we're back to basically the shape that we had when we just initially hit the uh, subdivision surfaces tool. Now, on the options here, we've, seen we've got several different things that we can do with subdivision surfaces. And one of the things that's critical and that, that I use often is the swap tool. If we take the swap tool and we click on the object, what's going to happen is it's going to go back to its original shape. Okay, we have to deselect it first and then we'll go back and we'll click on the swap tool and click on it and you can see how we get our old shape back, which is cool because this allows us to use some of the other reshape tools we get in when we're working with polygonal geometry as opposed to subdivision surfaces to maybe make this chair a little more exciting. So the first thing tool I'm going to use is the one right next to the reshape tool. This is called the offset outline tool. You see if I click on that and I click on a face, I can pull this shape out to create an offset surface inside my original surface. Now once I've created that offset, I can go back to my reshape tool and I can pull that out or I can push it in. I'm going to push it in just a little to create a more interesting shape for the chair. And I'm going to do the same thing on the sides using my offset tool. Do that here, and the bigger I make it, it's eventually going to take up that whole side. I'm going to push that in just a little too. View tool around to this side. I'm going to use that offset again. Pull it out to something interesting, and then re. And again, I'm not really worried about. Uh, exact dimensions here because this is something that I'm going to use initially as a, a conceptual uh, piece for my client who wants to see a lot of different chairs, a lot of different modern chairs. So I'm just going to fool around with these these uh, these rectangles and create some more offsets and until I can give him you know something that a few different options that he's going to like. So there we're going to pull out a little cushion, do the same thing with the headrest, pull out a little headrest that's coming out toward that. And now let's go back to our subdivision surfaces tool and let's turn that back into an organic shape and see what happens. Wow, look at that. we got a lot more detail, we've got a lot of uh, interesting spots in there. That's going to conclude my first lesson uh, in Form Z. And uh, what you should do now is you should make a bunch of amazing furniture. And then we'll get back to our next lesson.